Okay, so I'm testing out, I know it's gonna like kind of weird and stuff. So <laughs> I'm testing something out real quick, okay? I'm trying to see, oh, sweet. Okay, so I'm live in the Facebook group. It looks like I'm live in the Facebook group. And I'm also trying to see if I'm live on YouTube at the same time. That's the part that's kind of tricky for me. So like, if any of you guys are watching on YouTube, can you guys drop a comment in the chat right now for me? Do me a favor and drop a chat in the comment. Like, let me know where you're watching this from. Are you watching from the Facebook group, YouTube, <laughs> or like even, I guess, like the Facebook page? Like, where are you guys currently watching from? I see the numbers are you guys are coming in. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm trying to see. So I just wanted to do another pop-up q and A. I I know I talked about that. I was supposed to come by on yesterday, but you know, life happens and it gets in the way. But I'm here <laughs> this evening and um, I don't know how to tell if I'm like, if I'm on YouTube live, which is like frustrating. I can see that I'm on Facebook, YouTube. Thank you, love. I appreciate that because I was like, Pulling my hair out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, cool. I finally figured it out. I've been like trying to figure this in out for a couple minutes. <laughs> okay. So for those that are on tonight, you guys, we are doing another pop-up q and I'm talking all things about how to launch a six-figure cleaning company. This is in preparation for the challenge that's coming up on next week. And um, I got like, I've been getting bombarded with emails, people saying that they missed the date to sign up. So I'm actually also extending the <laughs> extending the the time to register for you to register for free. So if you guys are wanting to get into this challenge tonight is the last night. Um, I've been holding off like my like my little website person to make the changes because you you see your girl struggling with going live so you know that i'm definitely not like creating no websites and stuff right <laughs> so i told them to hold off for one more day um so i wanted to come on we do this q a i know it's mad late it's like almost 10 o'clock where i'm at which is like almost my bedtime but i wanted to do a q a and then i wanted to talk to you guys about the challenge okay so let me get this link so that way I can pop it in and then I can start focusing on questions. And for those that have questions, you guys start dropping them in the chat right now. Um, any questions, any questions about hiring leads, clients, closing leads, finding, you know, like all the things set up, no matter like what phase you're in, whether you're just starting off, we was talking this morning in the Facebook group about a lot of people that's just like in the setup phase and they're trying to figure out domain and website and phone system and all of those things, which they're all necessary, right? I think sometimes we get really overwhelmed by that initial setup part. But the best part about it is like once you do it one time, you know, then you're set right? You know, as your business grows, you'll you'll test out new platforms, you'll test out new things, which is totally cool. Um, I know, you know, I, I definitely do that because I'm always, I'm always trying to like find the best platform. Like I feel like there's always something better. So I'm always like trying to test out the right platform. Um, Uh-oh, so something back about a reload. I hope I didn't like mess something up. I'm trying to figure out where to drop this comment at um about the about the links so if i can't figure it out then I'll, I'll drop it and you guys can come back and get the link um for the challenge but i want to see you guys questions okay because your girl you know like i said it's, it's a little past my bedtime <laughs> so we're not gonna be up here forever forever okay ever ever but i do want to answer questions oh i figured it out sweet there it goes okay you guys I just dropped the links in the chat and I hope that like both of you guys, like both Facebook and YouTube will be able to see, um, will be able to see that. All right. I hope so. Okay. Let me see. Um, anybody that's watching on Facebook, so I, I don't miss, miss your guys' questions. I don't know. Can somebody drop a question in the chat? for those that's watching on Facebook so I can see if you guys, if I can see your chat questions. But yes, I want to hear your guys' questions. 
And if you don't have none, that's totally fine. You know, <laughs> maybe it's, it's all past our bedtime. Um, but I'm really excited about this challenge because I've been working on the workbook. Um, the work will the workbook will be emailed to everybody um, the day of the event because your girl needs some time because I really wanted to make this workbook really really good. Um, and I'm literally going to be breaking down the phases from how to set up right, how to hire, how to find clients, how to launch, and then how to scale. Like those are my main key points that I'm going to be talking about. Um, I'm pretty sure that we'll spend a lot of time on the hiring part and a lot of time on the on the lead generation part. Because those are like the main two pieces, right? You need your clients and you need your cleaners. And, you know, I was talking to a couple students on today um, and some of them was just, you know, sharing their frustrations about the hiring part. And I understand because like that hiring piece could take a long time. It really just depends on your market. It depends on your budget. It depends on where you're looking at, right? Let's see, somebody's, but I'm trying to figure out how to put aside money um, for taxes, for COGS. What does that mean? And money for subcontractors. Should I place money in different banks or just different accounts. So, okay. So if you are referring to like, just like the bookkeeping part of things, um, I I like to go off of the, off of the profit first strategy, right? Um, it's a book that I read in 2020. Um, and it's like that book, like really changed, like how I manage my, not only like my business finances, but I took those same principles and I implemented them in my personal finances as well. And it really, really helped a lot because like with the cleaning business, a lot of money coming in, going out, right. You have your money coming in, then you have your expenses, you have your payroll, you have your taxes. So the profit first strategy teaches basically how to set up like five accounts. You have your profit account, income account, taxes savings. There's one more that I'm missing. I don't know it by heart. Um, I actually brought on a actual profit first strategist and taught this whole theory inside of the CO Cleaning Academy. Um, so like this whole, this whole teaching is inside of there as well, but it teaches about, you know, having these accounts and then setting aside, like transferring the percentages into these accounts, you know, depending on how you want to manage your funds, whether you do it weekly, bi-weekly or monthly, but you would set aside. So, you know, 20% into your taxes, right? Whatever percentage that you're paying yourself, whatever percentage you have set aside for expenses, right? Um, and then, so like, that is normally how, that's how I do it. And I do it with one bank. I don't have like several different banks. I have a totally separate, separate personal bank. And then I have like my business bank accounts. And then I just have five accounts for every business that I have and I manage it just like that. So I can't, for some, I hate that I can never think of that fifth one. I actually opened up a new bank account today for another location that I'm opening. And I was like, I don't know the name of that fifth one, but just open me five accounts. <laughs> but yeah, so that is normally how I like to do it. And then you can always look at the book and there's a lot of tips online that talks about profit first. Like literally you can read about it. You'll get so much information on it. I hope that kind of answers your question. If not, maybe rephrase it a little bit and help me out. And I can, I can like give you some better clarity. Um, and he said, yeah, I'm trying to put aside. Yeah, but definitely do that because, and then also, you know, for taxes, you could, um, you could also pay your taxes quarterly, right? So don't feel like you have to pay your taxes yearly. You could pay your taxes quarterly. You can kind of like, they'll ask you for an estimate of how much you you know, you know think you'll make, which I know is kind of hard for new business owners, but they'll ask you for an estimate and then you'll pay that. Um, you know, I'll share a little tax strategy I do for my business taxes because um, you know that's money that I have. So I want to be able to leverage that. So actually what, I did for all of my businesses accounts, I set up UIL policies. So like insurance policies, uh, universal life policies that have high cash value. And I actually use that money to make a payment into that policy. So not only am I building up access to capital, but I'm also like building up a life insurance policy because I'm an entrepreneur, right? So I don't have a 401k um, I'm not paying into uh, what's that thing that 
Social Security, right? So I pay, I, I take my tax money and I put it into that. And then at the end of the year, I draw out enough to pay taxes for that. Or what I've also done in the past that I, I may do again is I just uh, get like a, a business line of credit, build, actually, you know, build business credit and establish that. And then I will leverage that to pay the taxes. And then I can make small payments throughout the month. Right. So that's, you know, I'm not no financial expert or advisor. So y'all it is, that's like truly like just a little, you know, thing that I, that I'm currently doing for like my taxes, because I want to double leverage it. Right. And I really want to be able to build capital. So that way I can use those funds to invest in other business opportunities. So that's, that's just a little bit what I do. Okay. Um, I just want to be solo for a little while till I save up. Now, Miss Latoya, I hope that you're still on here, love. Can I ask why? Can I ask your, your purpose of why you would like to? Because I really want to know why that that you want to do that before like I kind of go in. Because I understand everybody is totally 1000% able to have like their own opinions, their own agendas and, and to do whatever they want to do. Right. But my thing is, I just want to know why, if you have like, you know, a, a super motive behind it, because you don't have to do it solo and you don't have to do it little and you don't have to do that for a while. Okay. Like you could literally off the jump, build your business without you doing any of the cleaning. Like literally, I know I shared this last time that I was on here, but this is just like the perfect example of somebody that started the cleaning business without doing any of the cleaning themselves, without having any experience in this business, without, you know, had a cleaning business a couple of years ago and I'm came, coming back. Like, no, she joined the academy in January, knew nothing of nothing, you know, launched, found her cleaners, launched, um, like, I don't want to super go into detail because I talked about her story a lot last time. So definitely go back and catch the last live. But she is doing extremely well. Last month, she did 20K in her business. And on Monday, she's getting ready to open up her second location. OK, so you don't have to do it for a little. You don't have to do it yourself and you don't have to do it for a while. Like you could literally establish this business without you doing any other cleaning on your own. OK, and you can do it with little money like you don't, don't also feel like you have to have a lot of money to start this business because I didn't have a lot of money. I literally had to build up um, assets to be able to invest. I, I put twenty five dollars. I got some leads. I took the half of that profit. I put it back. I got more leads. I took half of that profit. I put it back. I got more leads and I just replayed that until I had enough right? I don't have enough money right now. And that's what I'm saying. So like, you necessarily don't need a lot to start. Are there a lot of free ways to find clients? Yes. Is it a little bit more work? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Right. Like don't ask your friends and family, right? You can like, I, I heard a story one time from a very successful cleaning business owner. Her company is located in Las Vegas. Um, her first year, she did like 600 K her first year, y'all, like super crazy numbers. Yes, she's in Vegas. So it's a really big market, right? Um, her name was Elaine. I'm sure if you like Google and find her story, she has an awesome story. Okay. Um, but the first thing that she did was email and text message, like no shade, no shame. Like, look here, the worst thing people can do is ignore it or delete it. Okay. But she sent an email and a text message, like, like, like crazy, right? To every single friend and family, every contact in her phone, basically, right? Just sent this message saying, hey, you guys, I'm opening up a new cleaning business. I would really love your support. If you would love a cleaning, a cleaning, I would love to offer you 10% off. And then I'd love to offer your friend 10% off if you can let them know about my business as well. And she did that over and over and over and over again, right? And then after she was getting these new clients, she would send them emails and she would say, hey, thank you so much for choosing us to provide you with the cleaning service. We're just a small business. Start People like to help small businesses, okay? We're just a small business starting off, we can really use your help by spreading the word about our company and telling all your friends and family about our services. And we would love to offer you guys both a deal. And you can also help us by leaving a review on Google. Okay. She did this her first year. She did not really invest a lot in other marketing sources and did 600K her first year. Okay. So there are unique ways for you to build 
uh, a business without having a lot of money. And like I said, I did, I went straight in on the lead gen marketing. I did, I went straight in on the Thumbtack and Yelp and Google. Not so much, I tried Yelp, Yelp was a fail for me, but definitely Google. But like I said, I started with $25. I got a couple of leads and I took the profit. I split it. I put half back. And that was how I did. So if you can find $25 or if you can find five friends to loan you $5, you know what I mean? Like the thing about it, I feel like with this business, you don't need a lot of money. And I feel like, you know, we always find ways to find money for other things that we need. Just find a way to make this a super priority and ask anybody. I, I didn't even have that $25. I had to ask my mom for it. Okay. Um, so there are creative ways to be able to find leads. Um, and that's okay if you, what you don't know, you know, like, um, I'm sorry, like, I'm going to go back up and read the previous question. You just said, like, I just don't know um, what I want to do. And that's okay. You know, the thing about it is like, um, somebody was asking me one one day, you know, like, how am I, you know, successful with my businesses that I'm that I'm launching right now? Or how am I able to run and have so many successful businesses at the same time? Um, and I just let them know, like, you don't see like all the past failed businesses that I attempted, right? Because I tried everything. I mean, everything under the, any little bit of talent that I thought I had in something, <laughs> I turned that thing into a business or any little idea that I had, I turned that into the business, whether it was like garage cleaning, closet revamping, makeup artist, not hair, because I don't know how to do hair. Uh, I had a video game shop. Um, I, I, I went to, I did massage therapy. I mean, like y'all, the list goes on, right? And my theory at the time, which I have evolved in this theory, but the theory at that time was I rather try a hundred things a hundred times and fail versus, you know, ha being filled with a whole bunch of shit. I could have, would like, that was my theory. Like I rather just try it and like, just see what happens. And if I fail, I fail, but at least I can say I tried it, but over time, as I have developed my mindset, I've learned that that concept is a little wrong and misleading to, to where like I could have examined myself in the past and saw if I maybe get, gave up too soon or noticed that it was a little bit harder work than it, that was involved than I initially thought it was. So I gave up too soon. I can definitely think back of some things that I did do that on, right? So now my theory is I would rather try one thing a hundred times versus giving up too soon, right? Because a lot of us do give up too soon when things get too hard or when it doesn't look like how we want it to look or we're not getting the amount of clients we're wanting to get or we're not making the profit we want to get. We tend to give up too soon. So, you know, it's kind of flip floppy. So it's okay that you don't know what you want to do. Maybe try it and just see how you like it, right? You may really like it and you may not but at least you will know, right? You'll have that clarity to where you would know. Um, somebody asked, um, hi there, the account that's for paying your workers, um, do you just add 40% into that account or should you regularly put money into that account if that makes sense? Yes, that does make sense. And I hope you're still on the live to be able to hear this question answered for you as well. Um, so yes, that with because of like how income like the money came in and on, if you're using Stripe, you can control how often money comes in. Like you can have it set up to where um, you get transfers bi-weekly, weekly, daily, monthly, right? So it kind of depends on how frequent you have the money transferring from Stripe to your account. Um, but normally what I would do is I pay 50% for cleaners. So I would just take out straight off the gate. I would just take the 50% and put it into the um, into the payroll account. And actually, I'm not taking 50% of the total amount because I have to take into consideration Stripe fees. Stripe has their fees as well. So I have to actually look at the report and see what the total profit was and then take 50% of that and then put it into the account because it'll be a little over because of Stripe fees. Like, you know, their fees are minimal, but I, I want to make sure that I have enough. And then also the, the fees actually pay them. Like, I want that to be covered as well. Um, I was using Gusto. So Gusto charged $6 per person per pay period uh, versus like charging 
everybody, let's say you have like 15 cleaners, but only four worked this week, then they're only going to charge you for the four cleaners that actually worked. So then I would put that money in there as well. Um, finding great help is the most challenging in this business. Yes. Um, I really hate that part of it. I hire, um, I hire, they quit and I'm left still cleaning. Feels like I cannot grow. No, I, I understand that. That is definitely the most frustrating part. Can you let me know how often you hire? Um, the hiring piece literally has to be done all the time. Like never be like never stop hiring. Like always be hiring. Okay. Um, and that's a, like daily activity, weekly activity. Um, you know, making sure that you have Indeed set up or you have your job, your job ad posted somewhere, you're posting and sharing it because you're right, it is hard to find good help. Um, but it is doable. Okay. So I, I don't want you to get too discouraged. And and I can totally understand how frustrating it can get because the growth of your business literally is predicated on how good your cleaners go, right? Um, you get in reoccurring cleans and, and converting your one-time clients to reoccurring clients literally depends on how well your cleaners do. But that's why you just always, always have to be hiring, right? It's it's the same way for most companies, you guys. The pain that we feel about hiring is the same pain that all of these major corporate 500 companies, 100, whatever, you know, fast, everybody. This is why they have designated HR departments to always be hiring because they understand it as well. And they they risk and lose even more money because they are actually training these people. And I, I was reading a documentary or watching a documentary that was talking about like how much each like trainee costs a company and it was like a couple of thousands of dollars. So they don't even make their money back from that new high hiree or whatever new employee to like a couple of months of them actually working because of how much they invested in that person. And if any of you guys ever worked big corporate job, you guys see that all these people come into training and what, like not even half actually makes it on the floor to actually go work. Right. And so after, after the train, they stick it through and, and however many people, you know, made it through the training, how many of those are actually going to, stay past the first quarter or the second quarter or the third quarter and actually, you know, pro provide a profit to the company. So hiring is, um, or the HR department within our businesses, it's, it's the same troubles that every other company has. That's why we just have to just make sure that we are finding good quality people. My saying is hire slow, fire fast. Okay. Um, because I want to extend grace as much as possible. But I have to understand that I cannot deal with too many more of people's mess ups because they are literally taking money out my out my kids' mouth, okay? <laughs> and they're not coming to pay my bills. So Yelp has failed me um, um, for they target small businesses. Yeah, Yelp is you know Yelp is not really my friend. So you know, um, but you know the thing about it, like I don't want to say that to discourage other people from trying Yelp because I know some people that do really really well with Yelp. It just wasn't for me. It wasn't uh, my lane, and it's okay. I love Google and I love Thumbtack, and they they were like <laughs> match made in heaven. Um, I need business cards to pass around. Yes, you can get business cards. You know, now they have like these digital cards as well, where like you can tap a phone or you can send it or airdrop it. So, you know, you literally like, you know, I always find creative ways to, to avoid a cost. <laughs> um, my husband has another word for it, but so like, you know, go to Canva, create a free business card. Have it on your phone. Text it to them. People are digital, right? Um, my husband collects these business cards, and this is no shade. This is not not shade. This is no nothing bad to the companies, but he just has this thick old wallet. So like every month, I just go in and like throw all them darn cards. He just takes a card from everybody, and he, I'm not throwing away because he's not gonna read them. Like he just he just so nice, and he just takes the card and he puts it in the wallet. But like it just sits there, and it just builds up his wallet super thick. So. Don't feel like you necessarily have to have that. There's some ways around it. And basically what I'm trying to help Latoya with is to, I don't want you to like, 
I don't want to say excuses, but I don't want you to create any roadblocks that could slow you down or stop you from launching. That's basically what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to diminish the things that you desire to have for your business. If you want business cards, boo, please get the business cards. But if the business card is going to delay you from launching, then you don't need the physical business cards. Let's be creative and we can figure out a way around it. How many reviews do you need to invest in Google local services? Um, so Google, like the rule of thumb is always to start off with 10 good reviews that stick on there. And I say that now also for Google because Google is getting kind of strict on their, their uh, what is it? Their reviews to where like they're kind of almost turning into baby Yelp, especially with their verification process. Um, but 10, 10, uh, 10 reviews is like the rule of thumb for Thumbtack, Google, and Yelp. Like Yelp, I wouldn't invest any money in Yelp until you got 10 good reviews that have stuff on there. Do you service commercial, residential? Definitely residential. Which one you like most? Residential. <laughs> I'm in Chicago. I was thinking about commercial. Yeah, I love residential. Uh, residential is is like my land of genius. Um, I I don't know. I mean, I've always like I've always considered all of them, like every single one of them. You know, inside the CO Cleaning Academy, um, I have partnered with a lot of expertise in different lanes of the cleaning industry. Because if y'all don't know, the cleaning industry is literally a $26 billion industry and it's not just consumed with residential. And I understand that. As much as I love residential, I understand there's different areas. So like inside the academy, we have trainings and courses on post-construction and commercial and Airbnb cleaning and student turnover, which is like, you know, when you go in and clean dorms out for students, we just had three students secure 100K contracts um, that they're going to be starting on in August to clean out dorms. That's only going to take them like seven days <laughs> and they got a 100K contract. Um, so like student, so student turnover, uh, what else? Like I say, government contracts, super big, um, cleaning up movie sets and uh movie sets and like on like like actually at a movie set and then uh what's the other one like studios so like you know like universal studios like people go in and like create those green screens and type of movie things right so like those so we brought in an instructor to teach us how to get contracts for those which that is super big and um that's super, that is super big in Atlanta area. And then also it's about to be super big here in Texas because South Texas and like Mansfield area, South of Dallas, they're about to build a mini, um, <coughs> like a mini Hollywood of like movie sets and movie studios. So that's super big coming up. Um, but yeah, and then the person that actually came and taught us this training, she just got a super big contract cleaning all of Tyler, Tyler Perry Studios, which is super dope. But you know, so there's all these different areas. So I'm like, every time I bring in an instructor to come teach on these other areas, I get super tempted to do all of them. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I think about the money. I'm like, oh my God, like I can go do this and get this. But I always just tend to just stick with residential. So I don't know. Um, let's see. Will I be paid more taxes because I'm a W-2 employee in my business? I'm an LLC, but next year I file as an S-Corp. So, you know, I would definitely recommend speaking with a tax advisor because there's benefits for doing both, right? So are you paying more taxes? Yes, because you're paying taxes twice. Your business is paying taxes and then you're paying employee taxes actually three times. Your, your, your physical business is paying taxes, right? Your, you yourself is paying taxes off of that wage that you're paying yourself. And then you, your business is playing, paying employee taxes to pay you as an employee. So, but there's, there's, there's definitely benefits to it. Do I really know them? No, because I do the owner's draw option to where I set up a reoccurring owner's draw. Um, and that's how I pay myself without, so that way I'm not having to like 
pay the double tax situation. But if there's a specific reason of why you have, like why you actually want um, a W-2, then, you know, I'm sure that there's a great reason for it. And then S Corp, um, that filing status does also have benefits, but like check into that as well, because I'm not sure if that, does that one require you to have a board? Because there's different rules and regulations for all of them. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that one. I, I've kind of looked into it, but I'm not quite ready to like fully go that route because um, when I was looking to it, like I didn't like all the requirements for it. Um, is there an average amount of percentage that an owner pays himself from the main account? Let me see. Hey, Facebook, I see that you guys are still in here. So I don't see questions popping up. So I don't know if questions are coming over. Please make sure you guys drop questions in the chat and I'll also answer any Facebook questions that you guys might have as well. Okay. Um, so that all that kind of that really just depends on you. I don't really know the average percentage. Um, I think it depends a lot on your profit margins. Um on depending on like how much profit you will take, right? Like how much you're paying your cleaners, how, what is your expenses like? Um, what is your acquisition cost like? You know, like the more reoccurring cleanings you get, the less acquisition cost you go down so the higher your profit margins go up. So it just really just depends. Profit margins for a residential cleaning business can be anywhere from... I guess low 15, maybe I can kind of say 10, but it really just depends on if you're like, if you're spending a lot on leads and ads, then your, your ROI goes down. Um, so I guess it, uh, maybe I guess I say 10, I don't feel like, I, I'm going to say 15 to 30% is the typical profit margins for like a cleaning company. Okay. Um, but that does vary on a lot with the acquisition cost. So like how much you're spending on marketing. That's why the follow-up is super, super important. Um, I'm having a, like a actual follow-up class, like a sales class, follow-up sales class um, in August um, because I want to like teach this because that's what turned my business really around. Like my first two years, I, I did it the hard way. Like seriously, I did the hard way. Every client was a one-off, like everyone. I had my first recurring client like in year one and a half and they didn't even stick around that long. Um, but after that one, I was like, man, I need to get some more of those. <laughs> I need to get some more of those. But, um, but yeah, the, how I did it the first way was just one offs. So every year, right. So I had like one offs and like, you know, another year, just all one off. And I, I didn't have any like, systems or practices in place to like get them to become reoccurring clients whatsoever. So I can just imagine, like, can you imagine even if I would have got 30% of all of those one-offs to become reoccurring and then the next year I started off with that 30% and then the following year I had all those one-offs, but I got another 30% to become reoccurring. So you see what I'm saying? So that's how you build and really, really build your business. That's how you build it to become that passive business to where you're not having, you're not so required to be in all that day to day. Let's see. Somebody respired to, uh, responded to Xavier says, I'm in commercial and I love it because it's reoccurring every month, easier to clean. Also, you don't have to deal with the clients as much. True. Hello from Dubai. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. How do you how do you do owner's draw? Maybe I should do that. I don't know um, how to pay taxes on money. I wouldn't take for myself. Yeah, so literally, so with the owner's draw, I pay taxes on the full business, right? And then every month, I uh, every month, this is like based, based off of the profit first model that I was talking about in the beginning. Um, I just stick with that certain percentage, no matter if I had a really, really good month a really, really low month, I find like that good solid percentage amount. And I just, I just do a transfer. I just do a, a bank transfer from one bank to my bank. And I just, that's my owner's draw. Um, and like, I keep the amount consistent. So that way it doesn't waver. Um, and then like anything over, right. It stays in the profit account. And then at the end of the year, I do like a bonus. 
And so, like I said, I got this directly from the owner's uh, from the profit first book. So, um, but yeah, let's see. Any other questions? We'll go about 10 more minutes, you guys. Um, and then for those that are just joining on, you guys, um, I'm going to drop the link again. We are having the challenge. It's a three-day event that's coming up next week, okay? It literally starts on Tuesday on the 18th of July, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I did extend it to where you guys will be able to log, uh, to sign up for free. So like literally tonight is the last night that you can log in and get access to the challenge for free. Um, after that, it will go up and it'll be $27 to um, get access to the challenge because of all the things that's coming along with it. But I really wanted those that needed to get in for free because I didn't want anybody to have any excuses about how they couldn't be there. Like this is your opportunity to get into this challenge for free because it will be going to $27 on tomorrow. Um, like I have my meeting at 6 a.m. <laughs> I was like, if you have until 6 a.m., okay? Because our meeting is at 6 a.m. in the morning to like go over some final touches for the challenge and make sure that everything is straight is straight because this is the, I used to do a lot of challenge in the very, very beginning, like literally all the time, but this is like the first time I'm doing a three-day challenge event and I just want to make sure that I'm I, everything is right. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I'm a little bit of a control freak. So I'm like, everything has to be right, okay? So you guys definitely click the link. And then also I'm doing like super dope giveaway. There's going to be heck of winners. Um, we're giving away over $800 worth of stuff, you guys. So also sign up for that challenge as well. Like, please sign up for that challenge. What should we do with $500? Um, we have supplies. So... Lady B, let me ask you, love, are you planning to clean? Because I guess every time I see the word supplies, I'm in the assumption that you're planning to clean. If you are wanting to build a business um, the way I like to encourage people to, then you're not going to need supplies. You're going to want to hire. You're going to want to hire individuals that have um, the supplies. You're going to you're going to hire the individuals that have the that have the experience, that has the equipment, that has the supplies, that has the transportation, and you're going to send them to go do the thing. So if I had $500 and let's say this is like after my business is set up, I have my DBA or LLC and and all those, all the my website and all that necessity stuff is taken care of, I guess um, I was going to say put some into hiring. So I would try all the free ways to try to do hiring first before I invested in Indeed. And then I would put that all that 500 into marketing, like off top. That's that's what I would do. I would put that 500 into marketing if I didn't need to put it into hiring. So of course you want to hire first before you start finding clients. I get this question a lot because people are like, do I find the clients first? Do I find the uh what is it do i find the clients first like do, do i hire first always hire first because you would rather your cleaners wait a little bit than your clients wait be like oh thank you i would love to provide you with the service but like you know i don't have a cleaner yet give me a couple of weeks you know so that's what i would do if i had 500 dollars and like all of those other things was taken care of well i think maybe that i should do the same thank you very much you are welcome love yeah, like it's super easy. Like, cause you don't want to pay taxes twice. Like, you you want to avoid as many fees as necessary. Like I said, I only like I said I only only if like that W two and you were paying yourself like that was for like a super reason. Like, I don't know what kind of reason, but if it was for a particular reason, then yes, because I know there are reasons because people do do it. Um, I just don't know them. But once I do, if I ever feel like I that, you know, that needed to be a part of my business structure, then I would totally implement it. Um, it just hasn't been yet. And I've talked to like, you know, tax advisors and my tax attorney and all them big people that know all these things that <laughs> I don't know. But um, but yeah. Okay. Any other last minute questions? Last minute questions on Facebook. Hey, y'all over there on Facebook world. 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I know it's like really late for me to be up on here. And y'all was like, yo, why is Jazz on this live tonight? Because I got a lot of work to do tonight. And I'm going to be working really late tonight. <laughs> really late. I already told my husband to bring me Celsius. So I'm like, y'all already know. Um, do you have the VA that we may use as well? Yes, of course. So I have a VA company. Uh, for those that may not know, I do have a total VA company. Uh, we service um, only cleaning companies. Okay. We have like one or two commercial companies, but mainly residential. Um, and it's super dope. I love it because we tend to help a lot of our students. Like they come from the academy and they're growing and they're like, yo, Jazz, like my business is growing. I can't take all these calls myself anymore. Or the ones that's like, you know, they started this business and they still have their nine to five and they're like, it's just getting too much. I can't do it. So it's super awesome to see like their growth and to be able to like really be in the midst of their business and see how their business grows and develops. It's amazing. So um, it's called visionva.io. Let me see if I can put the URL in the, um, in the link, in the, in the chat. Um, and then if you want to just send me an email as well, you can send us an email if you want to just schedule a call and just get some questions answered. I can do that as well. Um, but yeah, so I do have a VA company and, uh, we can definitely help you out. If I want to be completely hands off, what or who do we need to hire outside of independent contractors? So it would be um, basically what I just mentioned, right? It would basically be like your your cleaners and then a VA that would be able to run and manage the day to day. Uh, for example, you know, I can't really speak to what all VAs do, but for example, our VA company, um, we handle and manage all day to day. So we do your hiring. We screen for, you know, looking for new cleaners. We handle the interview process, the onboarding process, getting their insurance, you know, handling all of that stuff, right? Um, that's just one piece of it. We do marketing, email marketing, um, uh, cold calling marketing. Um, we respond and close leads that come in through Yelp, Google, Thumbtack, Bark. As much as I don't like Bark as much, our clients still have Bark. Um, so then we manage all of those, right? Our goal is to close all the leads, schedule them with your cleaners, make sure that your cleaners arrive on time, handle your follow-up calls to get your one-offs to turn into a reoccurring. So we pretty much manage all of that day-to-day. -day. Um, so that would be the way that I would recommend for you to be like completely hands-off. Um you would have a company do it for you. And now, can you find a solo VA? Yes, you totally can, right? Now, I'll give you some little hints. You know, finding a solo VA is kind of just as hard as finding a um, a cleaner. Because I'm a VA, we have a VA company, we, we deal with a similar, the same thing. Like I said, y'all, hiring is hiring. Finding good help, hard to find good help is, is the same thing everywhere, okay? We have a very like strenuous, like hiring and onboarding and training process for our VAs and half the ones that come through don't make it. Um, even after we spend hours and hours and hours training them and preparing them um, to, you know, connect them with the client, half of them don't come through. So uh, you can totally find like a freelance v uh, VA not all of them may have experience in cleaning, but like, like actually like what you need them. So the thing about like, you just have to train them how to be able to manage your company. Um, I remember in the very, very beginning when I was offering like our done for you services, a part of the service was that I would actually hire, um, train and hire a VA for my clients, right? So I did like a, it's kind of like a business in a box situation to where I would do all the things of like all the things for everybody. And I would set everything up for everybody. And um, part of it was hiring and training the VA. But what happened was after I put everything in a nice pretty bow and I would give everything to them, I would check in like, you know, once a month to see how everything's going, see if they have any questions. They pretty much like already fired their VA after like a couple of weeks. And I'd be like, oh, what happened? Like she was amazing. Like she was really good. <laughs> she was getting everything and having a good understanding. And then she's like, she just wasn't doing nothing. I was like, what were you telling her to do? She's like, I don't know. You you told her to do this. Like, 
No, boo, it didn't work like that. <laughs> like, I trained them enough to have a very good understanding, comprehension of what, but like, you still have to manage and tell them what to do. Still have to give them tasks. Still have to hold them accountable. You know, I'm like, you still have to manage them. <laughs> so that's when I just decided to just do the VA company. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do the VA company because it was hard for newer business owners to really tell them what to do because they were still learning what to do. They're like, well, I don't know what to tell her what to do because I don't know what to do. I just wanted her to come do all the things for my business and make my business be beautiful. But it just doesn't work like that. So when you have like a solo VA, you have to like manage, hold accountable, train, give tasks, um, do all of those things. Where like when you work with a company, then the company is actually managing them, giving them tasks, holding them accountable, and making sure everything is straight, right, straight. Okay. So um, I hope that kind of answers your question <laughs> with a long answer. But um, yeah. And it's a lovely thing. Like, like I think you, I'm not sure if you were on in the very beginning. Um, one of the students, she, this is her sixth month in business. She did 20K last month for her first, like, first biggest month was 20K. And she's about to open up a second location um, on Monday. She's opening up her second location on Monday. And uh, we're managing both for her. So she works a nine to five. She's in corporate. And she literally has two cleaning companies. Um, and she's like, her goal is to open up a new location every six months. I'm like, do it. Like, that's totally awesome. Like, she has extremely big goals. And I, I, I love it. Like, can you imagine opening up a separate cleaning location every six months? But I mean, her first location and the thing about it, you guys, you know, the first two months in her business was not looking good. She did like $250 her first two months in business. Um, and then she just, it just ramped up slowly, slowly, slowly. And then six months in, she's at 20K, right? So that, that's kind of like what I was talking about earlier. Like sometimes we just give up too soon. We, it, like, you know, oh my goodness, I didn't do 10K my first month. This is wag. Like, yo, Jazz, like, scammed me. No, boo. <laughs> it's just different, different markets, different areas, different budgets. It's completely different. Um, but I don't want people to give up too soon because it doesn't look bleak. Like, I asked her, I was like, why didn't you give up? A lot of people would have gave up after month two and they only made $250. Like, why didn't? And she just said that um, I just knew it worked. Like, once the first person booked, I just knew it worked. And I just had to stick through it and just build and however long it took. But once I saw that first job come through and I didn't have to go do the cleanings and I took care of it at, on the phone and I knew it worked. So yeah, super awesome. How much are the VA services for everything? Is there a way to get a cost breakdown? Yes, of course. So love, if you look right above you and I'll repost it too. On the website, it has like all the price information, and then you can schedule. Um, you can schedule like a complimentary call with myself and the co-owner with me. I had to bring on a co-owner because the business got built in too fast, like it just blew up too fast. Um, and we can have a call with you. We can break some things down. That's why I'm using your VA. I'm new, but want to be completely hands off and focus on growing the company. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. I mean, it's the best thing. I, get, I, I had a YouTube, I actually have a YouTube video that I did a couple of months ago because people were asking me like, when is the best time to hire a VA? Okay. I get that question asked a lot. And my thing is like, this, it's really never too soon to hire a VA. It kind of just depends on your budget. It really just depends on your budget. A lot of clean a lot of VA companies for cleaning businesses, they do not like to work with brand new cleaning owners and I get it. In the beginning I didn't get it. <laughs> I'm going to be so honest. I'm being super transparent here with y'all right now, okay? In the beginning I didn't get it cuz I was like, "Oh my god, these are my students. Like I love them. Like I want to help them. Like let's keep growing, right?" And um, I had a mentor because like in the beginning, I was getting like pulling my hair out, getting super stressed and frustrated. And I had to reach out to a mentor and ask him for some help. And it was funny because everything that he advised, like, or, or talked about, like the frustration part of the business actually happened. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, so, you know, 
they don't like to work with a lot of new cleaning business owners because uh, kind of like of the scenario that I just shared, right? When things don't go the way or, you know, it's not building fast enough or profits are not coming in fast enough, they'll close shop. Okay. So, you know, we have a lot, um, we have like a medium turnaround to where like we have our set of clients that's been with us in the beginning. We have new clients that's come and they, they're like, no, I'm like sticking to it no matter what. And then we have some clients that come in and they're in for a month and they leave out and they're in for a month and they leave out and they're in for a month. And, and, and it's totally fine. I get it. Right. Um, but I really wish that some of them will stick it through a little bit longer to see like the potential that the business could have for them. But this is why I say that there's really no good time. I mean, any time is a good time. It just all depends on budget. If you have the budget to afford a VA, who wouldn't want to have some, like to pass off the hiring, right? We like our VAs call and screen and look for cleaners all day. Like who wouldn't want to pass that task off? Who wouldn't want to pass a task off of dealing with cleaners and managing cl jobs and ha being on the call with frustrating clients, right? So it's it literally just all depends on budget. Would you recommend using Booking Koala on the hiring side for cleaners? Booking Koala has um, on their highest plan, I think it's the one ninety seven a month plan. They have the hiring funnel on there, right? Which is a, it's a cool funnel. Um, so you could, I, you know, I've never, as long as I had booking koala, I've always just did the middle one and I just, you know, went through the flow myself. Um, so it's a, I don't know, I guess, I, I guess you're asking if I would recommend it. If you want to spend $197 to have that hiring funnel, then yes. If you don't want to spend $197 and you want to manually like create your hiring funnel, then you, that's totally doable as well. I'm not sure if you're in the academy or not because the the whole hiring funnel breakdown is in there as well. But it's just it's just manual with, with where with the booking koala hiring is just it's uh it's a little automated. It's not even like fully automated. It's just a little automated. I went to the website and couldn't see the cost. Um, if you click on pricing and you scroll all the way down, oh yeah. If you scroll all the way down, then you'll see it on there. Um, and then also anybody that is interested, like I said, you can book a call. If you, do, if you click on get started, there's a button on the right top that says get started. Um, you can book a call with us. Um, all CO Clean Academy members, we are still waiving the setup fee as well. Um, but also know that the price structure will be changing um, in September after we do our first year. Um, just, you know, you learn more, you you know, and you got, you know, once you don't know better, you do better. So we need to like do some reconstruction, but um, we do lock in the price that everybody signs up with for a full year. So if you come in, you're set to that price for a full year. Okay. So I just want to just put that little disclaimer. So that way you won't, you know, September come be like, yo, Jazz, I was on that YouTube live and I saw the prices and they're not the same. Well, you know, boo, you know, once you know better, you do better. And we do need to do some reconstruction <laughs> because um, one thing that I noticed is like, like initially how I wanted to run that business, it, it has completely changed and evolved. When I brought my business owner in, in the beginning of this year, um, it was so purposeful. Like it was totally like, a God said, my God could only have made that connection because she is everything that I'm not. Um, and I am everything that she is not. So we are completely like perfect to work together. Okay. I know people be talking about business partners don't work well. Look, we is like yin and yang. Okay. I'm telling you where I fall off, she just picks me up and vice versa. But, um, but so I, we changed a lot in the business and uh, we have hired much higher, higher, higher quality um, VAs. We require a lot. Um, our requirements for our VAs have extremely increased um, tremendously, which is better for everybody. It's better for our clients. It's better for my headaches. 
is, <laughs> I mean, it's just better. But of course, you know, when you hire better, you got to pay better. So, you know, it's, it's a thing in business that you just, you just learn and grow with the punches, boo. And I just get my Vaseline ready and just be rolling with the punches. Okay. <laughs> uh, awesome. Any other questions? We got about five minutes and we'll wrap this bad boy up because I mean, I've been on here for an hour. I still see all my Facebook people. I don't see y'all dropping any questions, but it's okay. I hope you guys are getting some good information from this live and I'll keep it up in the Facebook group as well. So that way, anybody that is watching the replay, let me know that you're watching the replay. So that price that's there is for a year monthly. My apologies. For, no, girl, you're totally fine. Um, it, it is a monthly subscription. It's a monthly su subscription. You're able to cancel at any time. We do ask for a 21 day. No, we moved it to a 15 day notification um, that you are wanting to cancel. Um, because we only assign one VA per client. Um, I remember when we first started, it was, it was supposed to be like, you know, a one VA work with multiple clients. But over time I saw that that wasn't as best or beneficial. Like I needed one client. I needed one VA to know a client really well. I needed them to know how they wanted their business to be ran. I needed them to know their policies, their fees, their SOPs, how much they pay their clients. Like, everything really well right so now we just assign one va to one client but when a client leaves i want to make sure that we can find her somebody else so that way you know she's not just having to wait um and not be paid you know like during that time like we we grow really close with our vas because we have to we talk and we have to deal with them all all day all day how long have you been in business? I'm new to your channel. Oh, well, welcome. I'm glad you found it as well. Um, let's see. I've been in business for seven years, about seven, maybe eight years. You know, I don't know if we count the year of the pandemic or not. Like, <laughs> do we count that year? That year was a was a definitely like learn how to pivot year. We end up doing a lot of uh, commercial and fogging. And like, you know, these, these corporate companies were like desperate. Cause I'm like, how, how y'all find me? Like I don't advertise no commercial nowhere, but we were getting calls left and right. We built some really great relationships <laughs> with corporate companies um, that still had like workers working. And we did a lot of commercial, but I mean, a lot of commercial and fogging. And this was before like those big foggers were even like, like a thing, like, we were using, um, you know, like those little grass things, like those outdoor, like lawn people and they'll spray, like we were using those, <laughs> like putting like the disinfected and using those. But, um, but yeah, that's how long. So I've had been in business and then, um, we've had, I've launched the CO cleaning Academy. Um, it was a year in June. We had an amazing conference to celebrate that. And um, yeah, we've been, uh, since our year started, we've had over 600 youth students come through the CO Cleaning Academy. And um, I don't really do too good with like surveys and like tracking numbers. So I only know what people shared with me, but we've had a lot, a lot, a lot of successful businesses come out of the CO Cleaning Academy, which I'm just so excited about. And then um, I'm getting ready to launch a separate location um, in another state, like I just did all of the pre-work stuff on today. Oh my God. It was, I was on the phone with the banks for like three hours, but, um, and I really want to like share some behind the scenes on me, like growing that business from the ground up. So like people can see me along my journey versus like me hearing about the comp like the successful ones. So I'm excited about this new company. I think it's going to be really, really awesome to share the behind the scenes and the launch. So that way people can see that like, you know, it's not only that it's doable, but I'm going to like go through some of the same struggles and hardships that you're going through. Like I'm not, you know, I, there's no past go for me. Um, just because I'm teaching this and because I've done it a long time, I'm going to have some of the same things. I'm, am I going to have a leg up? Cause I kind of know what to do. 
Yes. I think I, is I'm more better because I kind of know what to expect. Like I'm kind of like, okay, I already know we're gonna have some some drama and some and some trauma and some isms. But I also know that like overall the business is gonna do well. And like overall, like this is just business. Like it just happens. It's just business, it's just life. Um so what if that VA gets sick or something? Would the business still be covered? Yes, good question. So we have um, a backup VA and then we have two lead VAs. Um, so that way they can always be covered. And then on, we work on this platform called Basecamp. That's kind of like our hub system. So when you, so each company that has their own Basecamp, um, the backup VA and the two lead VAs are also on that base camp. So that way they can also always be in the know as well through communication and business information. Um, and then because of our VAs are overseas, we have VAs in the Philippines and we target areas in the Philippines that are not heavily affected by monsoons because that monsoon season is like four months long and it cuts everybody's internet out. Um, so if you guys don't know that, if you're trying to find VAs, make sure that your VA is not located in a heavy monsoon area. Okay. If you don't know, please Google it. Um, and then the, uh, uh, the Caribbeans, which is totally awesome as well. But, um, but yeah, so they're all in the know and then we communicate on WhatsApp. So like everybody is like in the know of everything, um, which is awesome. So that way you can make sure to have coverage because yes, that is something that does happen. We have some VAs that's out tomorrow due to like some families, you know, some health family situations, but their companies are going to be fully covered. So like the owner won't even, won't skip a beat. They won't even, won't even know or be affected. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, it's hard being an entrepreneur. It's hard for anybody at any level being an entrepreneur. Um, and the the thing about it, I'm such a firm believer. If you guys ever go back and watch some of my YouTube videos, I used to do, um, m m what is it called? Jesus. Uh, morning mindset calls. Okay. Um, and I would do this morning mindset call every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I'm going to bring them back. I just don't know on which day um, I was doing this before I got really sick. And then I just have not had the opportunity to bring it back yet because I got sick again. But um, I'm just such a firm believer that working on you is working on your business. Um, like your mindset is such a crucial part in building your business. As you guys can see, like I have this sign in the back, right? And it says failure. And you're like, yo, why the heck would she have like something that says failure back there, <laughs> right? But in front of me, in the front, I have another sign that says success. And the sign says failure is the temporary state where the most valuable lessons are learned. And in the front, it says success is the predictable results of hard work, patience, sacrifice, and learning to put into practice every day. And I had to understand that both live together, that I cannot have one without the other. And having to come to that realization was probably one of the hardest things that I had to go through because um, like, I, I took pivots hard. I took failure hard. I, I was you, They always say, you're your worst critic. Oh my God. Like I was my worst critic times two. Um, so during the pandemic, right, when everything shut down and I kind of had to be alone with myself, I really used that time to develop my mindset. And I've been in a lot of business classes and people would start with mindset and like, oh my God, not this again, like speak positive and do all the things. But I read the book, um, Jesus, I, I knew I was going to forget the name of this book. I read the book, um, Think and Grow Rich. And that book changed my life. And I was in this MBA class and that was our first assignment. And I was, and I was reading the book that said, think and grow rich. And I went to the instructor. I was like, man, I've been reading this, but I don't see no secrets about growing rich. And she was like, go back and read it again. And when I went back and read it again, like it just a light bulb clicked in my mind. It was like the best, like, <laughs> moment of my life. And um, it changed my life forever. And I just now I've just been on this 
endless path of bettering my mind. Um, and it shows in my work ethic. It shows in my perseverance. It shows in my tenacity because I'm building this. Like I'm learning business, but not really like numbers and strategies and tips. Like I'm I'm building this. I, I'm building mindfulness and emotional intelligence, and it's showing up in other areas of my business um, because I had to realize that I was like the only one holding myself back right? Like I would not be on this live whatsoever because I'm like, just, I'm just not really that person. (laughs) I am the shy stay at home. You know, what's, what's the person that's like opposite of like the people that go out. I can't even think of the word. Cause I, I had to stop saying the word of, cause I was identifying myself with this word every time I would say I am. And, um, and like, I hated my voice. I did not want to be on camera at all. And I had to know that like, this was purposeful. Like I had to know that, you know, I thought God brought this business for me to deliver me out of that horrible financial hardship that we dealt with, you know, seven, eight years ago and how I actually started this cleaning business. But then I came to the realization that it wasn't for me. It it was for me to go through it so that way I can come back and teach it. And if I didn't press record on that very first video, then it wouldn't be a year plus later with 600 plus students that now have successful cleaning businesses. And it took that mindset that I had to work on and develop and things I had to get rid of and, and prune out. And it was a super ugly, hard you know, season in my life that I'm super grateful for now that, you know, I can see the fruit from it, but Jesus, it was a hard season. Okay. Like hard, but I would not be on YouTube. I would, I would not be doing this whatsoever because I knew I was holding myself back because of my limited beliefs and my, my, my low self-esteem and low confidence. And just, you just, just not believing in my own capabilities. Like I know I'm a boss, like I killed that cleaning business, but I ran it from the behind the scenes. I, I I didn't, nobody needed to know that. Like a cleaning business is a faceless business, right? I don't need to talk to the clients. My VAs did. I didn't need to talk to my cleaners. My VAs did. And that business grew phenomenally. But this requires a level of vulnerability that I was not comfortable with in the beginning. So, but I'm such a firm believer that working on you is working on your business. Um, And when people can understand that and put that principle into place, oh my goodness, we would all be so much further than we are today. I promise you that's, that's the best investment that you can make. I promise. I promise. With the VAs, are you required to provide a dialer or extra phone lines? No, actually we provide the phone lines too. Um, we provide the phone lines, which is awesome. We use this company called open phone. So that way, um, in, in the, in the situation where a VA is not available, then, um, your backup VA and the lead VAs will also be able to manage calls or they can step in when they can see a scenario kind of went a little South. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so you're, you're not required to have a phone line or a dialer introvert. Yes. Thank you. I can never think of that word. Um, do you provide scripts that can be used to train VAs in your CEO clean? Um, are there scripts? Now there's not necessarily scripts for the VA, but there's a lot of scripts in there in general for the company that you can give to your VA. Um, There is training in there on how to hire a VA and how to interview a VA um, in different places to look for a VA, Um, even though that place that I provided is kind of like not as useful anymore. Um, But yeah, so there, there is a lot of training in there for those that want to go like the solo VA hiring route. I did. So I sold two locations. Um, I, I sold two loca- two locations, closed one location, and then I'm about to open up another one. 
I wasn't for sure if I really wanted to open up another one. Um, I, I, I thought I was going to get into like the just building and selling scenarios because it was really cool, like to actually, you know, like to sell a company that's like worth, you know, like how they did the math and stuff like, you know, like that's worth a lot of money. I thought that was process was really cool. Um, and it wasn't done on purpose. I had hired a marketing company when I opened up my second location in Arizona. I had hired a marketing company to help me with marketing. I wanted just to try other avenues that I never tried before. So like, you know, I'd done like the thumbtack and the Google, but I wanted to try um, Facebook and I wanted to try Google ads. Um, not Google ads. I'm sorry. I was already doing Google ads. So I wanted to try Facebook, right? Facebook and Instagram because I saw people talking about it, but I really wasn't for sure about it. And if you guys wanted, like, I know you're probably like, well, how did it work? I really didn't care for it too much. I thought that it it did good with bringing awareness, but it really didn't like, um, it really didn't like bring in people that was like ready, ready to book. It was like, hey, I saw your ad. Like, I'm thinking about booking. What's your prices? They're like, hey, can you tell me what your prices? I think I want to get a cleaning next month. Like, it was like that. So it was great for awareness, but I never, ever got an instant booking. Um, oh, and they also did LinkedIn marketing. That's what it was. They also did like LinkedIn marketing to like get a hold of like real estate agents, uh, property management companies, um, moving companies, things like that. That that worked better than, than the Facebook ads. Um, but... So when I contacted this company, like they never, they didn't really like know like cleaning businesses can make this much money, right? Um, because I hired them for the for the Dallas location, and then I wanted them to start with the Arizona location. And then after building the Arizona location, they was like, "Can we go into partnership?" And I was like, "Sure." Like, what would that look like? And then we went into partnership. And then a couple months later, they was like, "Hey, can we buy you out and like buy the company?" And I'm like, "Sure." And then, um, so yeah, so that's kind of how that took place, which was really cool. It was, you know, it was an adventure. You said we should have five accounts for taxes, business profits. What's okay? Taxes, income, profit, taxes, income, profit, expenses, and payroll. There it is, payroll. So payroll taxes, expenses. I hope you caught the first one I said. <laughs> ah, okay. Expenses and payroll, income and profit. God, why can I never think? I hope you heard the first five that I said, but yeah, that's like the five. <laughs> payroll and taxes and expenses and profit and income. There it is. How do you determine how much your company is worth? Um, so like there's this whole um, math breakdown. I think I have it. I think I have it in the, um, I think I have it also in the, no, I don't have it. Cause I was trying to get somebody to come actually an acquisition specialist to teach on it. Um, but there's like this math breakdown. Um, Cause it's the whole thing. It's like, um, you like want to get with a lawyer and like they do all like they get this, they do all the things. I don't know. I really wasn't as present in that because I just really, my husband pretty much dealt with like all of that business side of it when it got into like the partnership part and to like the selling part. Um, and I always try to like make sure I don't talk too much about that part because I don't always know enough to like go into it, but I am going to bring somebody to come teach on it. I talked about it. Um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. So I'm just, I want to bring in an acquisition specialist. Um, so marketing isn't really a, a separate account because that's, that would be considered expenses. Now, the five accounts, like that's just like the, the minimum, right? You can have more. So if you want to separate your expenses where you have like your other expenses and then actually have a marketing account, you totally can. But the expenses in a cleaning business are so, so low. Like your marketing and your payroll are going to be your biggest expenses. What's your other expenses? What your, your phone, your email, your domain, your website, booking Koala. Um, 
that's literally it. Like that's literally like, like the, your, your, your normal expenses. Um, the highest two things is going to be payroll. Cause that's, you know, whether you're paying 40, 50 or 60%, that's, that's off top. Right. And then however much you're paying, you're spending on uh, your marketing. Um, so I don't, I don't really know if there's like something that I, I, I did. I'm a big research person, right? Um, I'm a very big on like market research. So whenever I do something or I'm about to do something, I research the mess out of everything. Um, and so when I was, when I finally found Thumbtack, I Google like, you know, how do I find house cleaning clients? Because I didn't know when I was first starting the business, like, what do I do? Right. So I Googled and Thumbtack popped up. They're like Thumbtack. I'm sure some other ones came up, but Thumbtack was the first one. So when I, when I signed up for Thumbtack, I researched and figured out everything about Thumbtack. Um, and there's a lot of good information that was actually on the website itself on Thumbtack, right? Um, and literally I just, I, I just did exactly what they advise for you to do to be able to boost, um, your, your leads on there. And the thing about Thumbtack we have to understand is they don't mind sharing all the things that was going to help you become a successful business owner because they are in the business of you becoming a successful business. They are not success. They are only as successful as you are because I don't know if you guys saw, well, maybe not because, you know, I, during the Super Bowl, Thumbtack had a commercial during the Super Bowl. Do you guys know how much Super Bowl commercials cost? They're like hecka expensive. But what they're in the business of doing is bringing in consumers to the platform, right? So they don't get paid until people choose a provider. So they specialize in all these local services. So painters, um, hair, photography, wedding planners, you know, just service-based business owners, okay? Um, but they don't get paid until somebody actually selects a business and um, selects a business. Because the moment they select a business, that's when we are being charged, right? So they need us to put our best, our best foot forward. They need our profiles to be perfect. They need our reviews to, we, they need us to have enough reviews. They need us to have enough before and after pictures. They need us to have enough videos or your FAQ filled out, right? So they only grow when we do well, right? So I think that was the biggest thing for my growth, like in the very beginning was just doing all that research and literally doing everything. If they if they said that it's best that your response rate is within 15 seconds, baby, I was sleeping like this, okay, with this phone and be like, hold on, there goes an alert. <laughs> okay, like I, 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 I put super high priority in my response time. I read something talked about customer service. Look, I act like every single person was Michelle Obama messaging me. We about to go meet to Target and get some coffee, okay? Like that was the level of customer service that I had. That was the level of response that I had. My profile was built to the nines, okay? Um, and that's what contributed like to such fast um, growth in the beginning. Like I even had like a couple of people from corporate call me from Thumbtack and they was like, what are you doing? Like, we're looking at your numbers and your close rate and like all these leads is like, you're just closing all these leads. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm doing everything you guys said that we should do. And they're like, oh my goodness. Like I had a couple of people from corporate of Thumbtack call me because it was wanting to figure out like how, and I was like, I literally just did like you guys spent all this money on research and surveys to figure out how to create the best in outcome for the providers. And I just used up all the resources you provided us. And it's so like, that's, that's a lot what I teach in the academy on closing leads and thumbtack. I had, um, l not last night, I guess Tuesday, I think today's Thursday. Yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday, I was, we had our, our live Q&A and another student had came and said, hey, like my first month in business, I had nothing but Thumbtack leads and we did 7K our first month. And I was like, hey, that is so awesome because like that is, that is, you know, 
what I know Thumbtack is capable of doing when you're are when you're in the right market, that 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 is a bonus. And if you do it the right way. Uh, let's see. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. This is gonna be my last question. I, I'll take one more question after I read this one. Um, so we purchased the VA service from your company. It practically will do everything from top to bottom, basically, and pay. Yes, pretty much. It really does. We have a new client that started this month. And um, he he had his business open, he closed it, and he opened it back. Um, he's in Minnesota. So I'm, I'm not fully familiar with the market, kind of just by because working, you know, seeing the back end of his business. And like his books is full. And he's already like, hey, I went to go visit my mom in Dallas. I'm thinking about opening another location out here. And I'm like, do it. Like, let us know. We'll like... And so, you know, he's a full service client. So we do like hiring and everything. So pretty much, I mean, it's pretty perfect. <laughs> I mean, you know, like does your VA have to learn exactly how you want them to conduct calls? Yes. Do they have to learn your isms? Yes. Right. But it really is. A lot of the questions that we get from new clients, they're like, like now what do I do? I was like, I don't know. Like, what do you what do you normally do with your spare time? <laughs> because like we really do manage all, you know, everything. Now, you know, if you want to like respond to leads after hours, then be my guest. You know what I mean? Like, so there's some clients are like they just super want to be hands on. And, you know, you do you, boo. And there's some that's like we don't hear from them <laughs> until like we do our like our weekly our, our biweekly check in and send them a message and just make sure that everything's straight and they don't have, you know, any need of anything or anything new they're wanting us to try or another market they're wanting to reach out to or whatever. But yeah, that's pretty much, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Okay. All right, you guys, I appreciate y'all sticking with me so long. We've been on this, on this live for about almost an hour and a half, y'all. And y'all can hear my voice is getting a little crackly. <laughs> but I do appreciate y'all. Y'all know before I leave out, I got to let you guys know again about the challenge, okay? Because if you guys jo enjoy tonight, the challenge is going to be so dope. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be a three-day event, July 18th, 19th, and 20th, okay? And I'm breaking down all the things from launch, from zero to launch, on how to get a six-figure cleaning company without you touching a mop, Okay. So I heard Miss Lady Ma'am early. She was like, I just want to just clean for a little while. No, boo, you don't have to, okay? And I don't want you guys to think that a nine to five can stop you from having this business. I don't want you to think that you, you don't have enough money to stop you from doing this business. I'm going to show you how it, none of those is going to stop you from doing this business, okay? So I lost my copy and paste because I was copy and pasting the VA link. But I'm sure if you guys scroll up some, okay, you'll be able to get the link to register tonight. And also tonight is the last night that you can register for this event for free, okay? Because I have my meeting tomorrow at 6 a.m. And I know that we're going to go ahead and change it over um, for all my little last minuteers. But y'all, don't procrastinate. Lock it in right now. And I hope to see you guys there. Um, it's going to be super dope. And then for any of those that's new, like, yo, Jazz, I didn't even know you existed, boo. You guys also join the CEO Cleaning Academy in the Facebook group. The Facebook group is also another free resource to where I come in and I answer questions. So I'm live on Facebook right now. Hey, Facebook. Okay. Um, and there's a really dope community. So that way, you know, you can converse and be amongst like-minded entrepreneurs where you guys are all literally trying and striving to do the same exact thing. It's something about proximity. It's something about being in the midst of an entrepreneur that understands um, what we're trying to do. I mean, tell you, it's amazing. I can't talk to some people about business because they're like, yo, Jazz, like you tripping, boo. Like chill it out, okay? Like it's 10 o'clock, go to bed. I'm like, nah, girl, I got to build this. I got to do this. Like, you know, I got things to do, right? Like, entrepreneurs understand exactly what I'm about to say when I'm about to say, I'm about to go do some more work, right? Other people be like, girl, please, you tripping. I'm about to like watch sisters and like go to bed, <laughs> okay? But yeah, so um, also that link, you guys can find that link on my channel. So if you're in YouTube, like just go like to the main channel thing, you can find the, or it's like to any 
previous video, you can find the link to the free Facebook group and then get into this challenge, y'all. Hey, Facebook, I see somebody from Facebook drop the comment. I, I can't see the name, um, but hello. I'm super glad y'all here tonight. Um, if you guys have any questions after the video, okay, if anybody that's watching the replay and like stick it all the way through, okay, kudos to you. And you guys have other questions. Um, also uh drop them down and I'll, I'll swing back around and answer any questions for you um i will and then i'll i'll find that facebook group actually let me just do that right now because you know i might forget and my laptop battery is about to die let's see where is where okay um let's see here okay so i'm going to drop the facebook group link y'all um, so y'all can come join the Facebook group. It's super dope. Um, I will actually, if y'all join tonight, I will let y'all in tonight as well. Um, and then there's that. And then I'm going to get you guys the challenge link as well. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me try to find this challenge link. Um because I want you guys there so bad. It's going to be such a great event. And then also, you guys, share this with your friends and family as well. So if you guys know anybody that is interested or have an idea or you, anybody that you want to partner with, send them this link as well. So have them register tonight. Now let them know, like, yo, boo, this is the last free day to get in. So get in, okay? <laughs> get in so that way they can be able to access the challenge for free. Otherwise, they can still join. I'm definitely not saying for y'all not to join. It just might be, you know, $27 for them to join. And that's fine too, okay? It's fine. That's fine as well. Um, but all right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and um, transition to my next work evening <laughs> task. And um, I will see y'all later. So like I said, Drop more questions if you have more questions, and I'll swing back around and answer them, and uh, I'll see y'all later. All right. Good night, y'all.